Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics. I'm here with Adrian Bell. Uh, you are running as a brand new Congress candidate in the 14th District of Texas, and uh, you're a native Houstonian, so I wanted to talk to you. Uh, 14th District, is, uh, Gal Galveston County, Jefferson County, uh, so about, I think, two hours outside of Houston. Uh, first and foremost, what's what's been the impact of Harvey uh, where you're living and running? Well, the uh, Harvey has just been uh, devastating. There are people um, who died, who've uh, drowned. Uh, families have lost everything. They have lost uh, homes. They've lost cars. We have practically been shut down for days. And so today has been like the first day. Some people have been able, uh, in my area of Pearland, to actually go out. Some of the stores are open again, and people just kind of getting out, assessing damage. You see cleaning going on. You see people uh, pulling things out of their homes. So it has, and but we're not out of the woods yet. That's just the. That's just it. Harvey is not done. Today in Beaumont, they lost their water pumps, so they have no water uh, this morning in Beaumont, and so water was being airlifted to that area. So uh, it just goes on and on and on of the many problems we've had. The chemical explosion that happened this morning in Crosby. Crosby is like 30 minutes outside of Houston, so. Uh, you name it, uh, Jordan, we've had it going on here. It has just really been heartbreaking and devastating for us. And uh, in your specific area, have you, what's the flooding been like? Uh, do you know of people who have died in your area? No, my area of Pearland uh, fared out pretty well through this. There were uh, homes that have experienced water. We did have some evacuations in an area that's uh, Brookside Village, but uh there has not been uh, that in this area. But when we talk about Houston, we Houston is like a city of cities. So we have a lot of cities that we're talking about. We just talk about Houston. So since it really is a community, even though Houston is so large, um, it's like the deaths that have been occurring, uh, like this Pasadena family that passed Pasadena is like within 30 minutes, uh, depending on where you are in Houston. And so we're all interconnected. So, uh, it's like all of this happening uh, with one of the uh, sergeants that passed away with the police uh, off the Houston police office. That affects us as well. Um, even though it may not be your neighbor, we're we're, we're neighbors, uh, even if they don't live on your street. Mm -hmm. So we are still watching uh, not the weather, but the water runoff from the reservoirs is still filling up, still uh, flooding neighborhoods. So it's we're a long way from being uh, recovered. And uh, you and I, you and I spoke at uh, Netroots Nation about kind of Texas. Uh, obviously, it's thought of as a red state, but there are some areas that uh, are open to a progressive message. But uh, most Texans, I believe, are, are very pro oil and gas, are very pro, uh, you know, anything chemical, gas, you name it. It's kind of like born into being a Texan. But uh, you know, the bottom line is most experts say climate change made this a lot worse. And we know that oil and gas companies are, if not the most, uh, at the top of, of causing climate change. Uh, obviously, it's not the focus now as people are digging out and trying to uh, rescue, you know, save each other. But uh, right. what, what do you think in terms of uh, whether constituents that you might serve or other Texans, you think this might open their eyes a little more? When we look at the numbers uh, of Harvey so far, and like I say, Harvey's not yet done, the damage caused by Harvey has exceeded what happened with Katrina and what uh, happened with Sandy. So we've got to look into climate change. There are changes that have occurred. We have experienced a flood that should not have happened in what, 500 or 1,000 years, but it's happened. And we've had so many devastations within the past 12 years. So we cannot uh, sit back and say that climate change is not real, that we don't need to address uh, climate change issues, uh, environmental uh, concerns. We've got to really uh, look into this because we uh, this is going to cost billions for Texas to recover. So that money has to come from somewhere. We cannot continue to have these type of devastations occur in the United States because we cannot we can't afford them. And we cannot afford to just sit around and not work out solutions across the board that people do not have to go through this. I don't want anyone 
to have to go through what Houstonians and the uh, area around Houston is now experiencing. It is really, when you're not here, and a lot of places you could not even get here, the airports just opened, uh, I think, last night for some flights, but Houston airports have been shut down for days. So you had people who could not get back to Houston or people who could not even get out of Houston. And so I would not like to see this ever happen again because it is it is just heartbreaking. And we cannot afford it as a country to uh, have all these things happening. We're building in areas that we probably shouldn't be building. And we're causing p destruction on lives that uh, if we know that we're building in, in places that we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be building, we just shouldn't be building that. We've got to stop thinking about profits and think about the people and what can we do to take care of families and help people survive. Because right now, this area is in a survival mode. Well, that's a good segue because, I mean, Houston, I think, is the number fourth largest city in the country. Uh, mm -hmm. You got Miami. Uh, every time I'm there, they're building more high rises. Uh, all these cities that are, are are the first ones that are usually hit by these storms um, are, are building up. When I was in Houston a few years ago, downtown is, is being built up uh, mm -hmm. even more so. Um, and like you said, there I don't want to get into gentrification right now, but a lot of it is gentrification. So uh, what what do you do? Do I mean you have a Republican president, obviously? The people you're the person you're running against or the people you're running against, the Texas legislatures, uh, the governor there uh, isn't exactly, uh, you know, big on renewables. Let's put it that way to say, to say right. the lightest. Uh, how do we change the discussion? Because obviously climate change doesn't cause the storm, but it makes the flooding and those kinds of things from kind of aggravating to deadly. Right. Right. I really want to applaud the Houston leadership, Mayor Turner, uh, the police chief, the uh, judge. They have really shown strong leadership in a city with this many people and so many criticisms they were getting about why didn't Houston evacuate early. You cannot put millions of people on a highway and just expect everyone to get out. It, it just it doesn't work like that. But they have really. Uh, shown great leadership. And I just want to say that for them. Uh, when it comes to building, we have in, in Brazoria County, they are now building a toll, toll road. You know, I'm not a fan of toll roads at all. But this toll road is in the middle of one of our highways because it has a large grassy area. Well, they're going to take away that grassy area and uh, create a tollway. My concern is when they do that, it floods here again, like it, like Harvey, we would be underwater down in this area from uh, 288, not, uh, from 610 all the way out to almost Highway 6. Because right now it has grassy area and water can go in and uh, be absorbed in the grass. Well, when you keep putting all this cement and taking away uh, our green areas, it is causing problems. And so we have really got to look back collectively. Our... Uh, Texas legislator uh, uh, took away protections from uh, insurance companies or gave them protections, took away protections from the consumers, where now we're trying to tell people, hey, you need to go file your uh, insurance claim today because effective tomorrow, there's a new law in Texas that came up during the special session that is going to make it harder if you need to file a lawsuit against your insurance company. And one thing you have to consider is the damage we're having here is from flooding. And if you don't have flood insurance, you're in trouble. If you have insurance, you still may have a fight. And it's always on the brunt of the consumer to prove it. And so when we start taking back uh, protections, you got the uh, protection that uh, has been taken back where even chemical uh, uh, neighborhoods can be built closer to chemical plants. And so uh, those kind of protections, the government can stop. But instead of that, this administration is rolling back protections. That's just hurting us. And when when uh, you hear about the, the you know, we're going to take money to build a wall. Well, Texas needs so much help uh, right now. And so we cannot uh, build a wall around Texas and Texas is flooded and Texans are flooded and Texans are hurting without clean water and without uh Transportation, I was looking at numbers today, and over 500,000 cars have been uh, totaled in this area. And that was this morning. 
and you have over 30,000 people in Houston, the Houston area are in shelters. Schools are closed. And it is just, uh, our lives are not normal. And we don't even know um, what is normal right now. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's hard. And also, I mean, the bottom line is, if your state is built on oil and gas, chemical plants, uh, and you have this level of flooding, and storms are now not one in every 100 years, or not one in every 50 years, but one in every 10 years, maybe, uh, these refineries and chemical plants are not, they're not protected uh, from flooding. So if the power goes out or there's an explosion, I mean, I believe uh, at this Crosby plant, many, many officers had to go to the hospital uh, because yes. of being dizzy or effects uh, of, of the chemical uh, explosion. Right. At uh, the name of the plant, um, Akima. Right. I think I've heard Artima. Uh, they produce uh, organic peroxides that have to be refrigerated. Well, the power went out and therefore they could not protect it. And so the really thing that, that gets me with this, the chemicals being released, they don't have to tell us what kind of chemicals are being released. Right. And which, why are they being protected and we're not? And one of the uh, officials said this morning that the smoke that you see coming from the chemical plant is like the smoke you see at a campfire. Give me a break. You know that there, there's no, and that's not right, that they don't have to reveal the information to us. What kind of chemicals are burning? Because they had at least 10 officers that went to the hospital. You had the people that live uh, in a mile and a half radius were evacuated. I have a friend who, who lives out there. I got several friends who live out there that had to be evacuated. Well, once it's released in the air, you cannot contain it. So it's not contained to a, a mile and a half around there. It's it's in the air. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, bigger picture, you're running for Congress, obviously. Um, you see, uh, you know, Ted Cruz and these people, they've been in the news because they kind of uh, played politics years ago with Sandy. But you're even, right. star you're even starting to see reports now that, you know, they're going to be lobbying to get subsidies for the oil companies and, and, uh, and these, these folks. Uh, who have lost, you know, a lot of money. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because it seems kind of interesting to me that the priority focus would be on, you know, big oil rather than uh, flood insurance and, you know, small business and those kinds of things. Right. Well, when you see that uh, Trump is talking about tax reform, right now you have a lot of people here, and I don't know the huge number, but I know over 40,000 homes have been destroyed and there are more to come. They're trying to find a hot meal and some dry clothes. They're not concerned about a tax reform. They're not concerned about what uh, subsidies the oil and gas company is getting. I think they have their priorities wrong. We have to look at the people. When I look in District 14, and I have been campaigning in Beaumont and, and uh, Port Arthur come to know people. And when I looked at Port Arthur, I was on Twitter and all I, I, what I did was there were uh, help, pleas for help uh, coming through Twitter. So it was just retweeting that, trying to get the, the word out that Port Arthur was in trouble. They were cut off. They had to be, you couldn't drive in. You had, they had to be helicoptered out. And so you've got a lot of elderly there. Uh, one of my friends, her first uh, report that I read, her mother-in-law, who was 84, was sitting on her kitchen cabinet waiting for somebody to come get her. That just breaks my heart. And so we're not at, we, we don't need to be playing politics. We need to be saving lives and helping people. And so when they want to just start talking about what to do uh, for profits, it just shows that the heart is not with the people. We have, we've got so many people that have been displaced. We have so many more in Southern Missouri County. The uh, flooding expected to happen at 1 a.m. this morning from the Brazos River or the San Bernard River. And this is Friday morning. So there are going to be more homes flooded and more uh, people displaced. So uh, my thing right now is just like, what can I do to help the people, the people that I've loved, the people that I've met? And not, um, it's not about politics. Politics is people. And it should be the protections for the people. So since the GOP, all they want to do is talk about uh, uh get money for big companies and tax reform and, hey, what a big turnout. 
that's not about the people. And so the people need leadership that is concerned about them. And right now I'm seeing that in some city leaders that have really taken the helm, but not so much from uh, our national leadership. And I know uh, the my opponent that I'm running against in 14, he voted also against uh, help for uh, uh, Hurricane Sandy, which, you know, you vote against hurricane help in, and then you've got areas that, that are going to need hurricane help. So it makes... Um, it really makes Texans look like now we need help when y'all voted against help for the people in Florida. And uh, last question, in terms of the Democratic Party, obviously a lot of politicians in the Democratic Party take money from oil and gas. A lot of them are pro fracking uh, and a lot of them, you know, say they're for climate change. But again, take money from folks contributing to climate change. Uh, do you think this is a time uh, for a little soul searching and people to come out, uh, you know, against these folks who are contributing? Yeah, I think this has been a wake up call for a lot of people. And I think it's going to continue to be that the fallout, you know, eventually there's going to be some political fallout of what didn't happen, what should have happened. How could we do this thing better? Uh, but right now we're just trying to survive. And I think people will look back. We'll look and see what do I need to do personally? Maybe some of those who took oil and gas money see that, hey, I need to go in a different direction. We can only hope. But right now we're just in a survival mode. I just came from a meeting. Our church we're opening up as a uh, donation drop off center to get logistics going so that we can help the people in the community uh, who need. And uh, tell people where they could find out more about you as well as uh, any places to donate in your area. Well, you can find out about me on my website. It's bell2018.com. Uh, I'm also on Twitter on ADRBLL. And so I would suggest uh, just offhand, if you want to donate, donate to uh, one of our local food banks. So because uh, we have a lot of people who, who just don't have food, but we have the Houston Food Bank. We have the Galveston County Food Bank. Uh, are just two that just uh, come to mind. Uh, we're going to be posting on social media, on my campaign website. I've been posting all the information that I can find out. If a person needs help from FEMA, there is, they can go to disasterassistance.gov to get help from FEMA, or they can call 1-800-621-3362 uh, to try to get some help. But uh, Jordan, we just we really need people to just, uh, we're working together. I tell you, one of the best things that I've seen is uh, this area has just been given so much, they have been asked to please stop giving. Uh, we had lines outside of the George R. Brown for people who wanted to volunteer. And they turned people away because people really want to help. So we're showing FEMA and any of the other organizations how it can be done. It's going to be people helping people. And uh, it really does take a village because Texas has a long way to go. But, hey, we're going to do it because we are Texans and we do stand proud and we do take care of one another. And I think you are going to be uh, one of the reasons Texas goes blue uh, at some point soon. So thank you very much and uh, stay, stay safe. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.